<laughs> last July, five tornadoes touched down on one day in Minnesota and western Wisconsin. Just last week, a tornado in Ottertail County was the strongest tornado Minnesota has seen in 10 years. So we took another look at this good question that we actually did yet last year during July. How does the National Weather Service determine how powerful those mm. storms are? Riley, I don't know if you've ever had a chance to go out with the National Weather Service while they do this, but it sure is something. It is. You know, and what they do, I mean, it's different because I've chased before. This was years ago. Yeah. And, you know, when you go and you look at the debris from this, you know, it's kind of a, a way of how it's the debris is laid out. You know, you look at it, if everything's sort of laying in one direction, a lot of times you can kind of think of straight line winds. Mm -hmm. If it's laying in different directions, that's kind of indicating, you know, uh, more of a, of a tornadic event. So mm -hmm. a lot of they will look at that. That's just one thing. In addition to, you know, um, you know, for example, we just had the one uh, a few days or last week or whatever that was an EF4. Well, they look at how the how the destruction was with it, even though, you know, it was in an open field. Most of it, it did hit one one a building or a couple of buildings mm -hmm. and they can look at that mm. and right. see by you know how high the wind would be with right. that so it's very fascinating on it how is. they do this it's interesting you say that though about the one in Ottertail county last week if they look at a field so when we went last year to look at the one in scandia local law enforcement had a drone mm -hmm. the weather service did it the local law enforcement did so they sent up their drone mm. to get video so the weather service could look at the video in the path mm -hmm there of the fields because mm -hmm. uh, otherwise they wouldn't have an overlook at it and they yeah. were determined there i mean they also looked at the damage to roofs they talk with people who witnessed it uh they look at kind of did it skip maybe mm -hmm. does it hit a higher elevation and not a lower elevation what was interesting to me though is they were escorted a lot of times because these are happening in areas that are sort of outside of the cities the ones that at least that we went to mm -hmm. they worked with local law enforcement um, because you sometimes have to go on people's property, ask people. Huh. They, mm -hmm. Law enforcement is, is usually out there kind of watching what's happening, so they know this is where the damage is, this is where the damage mm -hmm. is, so the weather service isn't kind of wasting their time right. looking all over the place. It is Eric. an interesting process, right? I went along when we had the tornado in North, North Minneapolis. Minneapolis. Yeah. So this was more of an urban area, which right. was very different for them compared to the uh, sort of work you do out in the farm fields. They had a lot more information right. because you had so many houses and, and you had so many roofs mm -hmm. and so much more damage that you could look right. at and try to figure it out. The aerial footage is just very interesting mm -hmm. to me to see and I'll, you know, we'll sit and Google images a lot of times, but you know, especially in a cornfield, you can actually see the, where a parent tornado would be. Uh -huh. You can see the corn stalks twisted, but you can also see also where there's little mini, mini vortices that would go uh -huh. around mm -hmm. the parent now, tornado. So it's just, it's interesting to see right. uh, these, you know, and then, you know, it, it, do you know why like, it matters, Riley, Heather? Do you know? I mean, uh, other than like being able to put it up on the big board and say this one was really big, like, does why why is there a value in uh, assigning a, a measurement a, to an EF one or an EF? Well, I think also has to do with about insurance purposes too. I would imagine. I mean, that mm -hmm. one thing, but also you know, rating them. I mean, because you you have to to know, and that's the thing. We don't, you know, a lot of people will assume, you know, if if you wait wake up and there's a lot of damage in your area like okay automatically a tornado hit but you know the thing is, is you can get just as as damaging winds with straight line winds sure. it just really depends on you know the type of event that you did have so uh, you know it's very important and that's a lot why a lot of times too you know you see a funnel in the distance you don't know if it's actually hitting the ground so we have to you know make sure that we get a you know a uh, you know they go out and rate it to make sure and then you can actually call it a confirmed tornado right and then hopefully it will help people as we continue to forecast these types of things or, or you know, it, let people know ahead of time, right. you know, what it looks like to the lessons that we've learned from it. So right. yeah, but it's all, it's all really interesting stuff. It is, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's kind of a fascinating story. And I, they're that, getting to wind speed, right? That's what the, they the look at the damage. Yeah. Gets, to see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the they damage, get damage from it. Reverse correct. engineers. A 